Good evening, everyone. It's going to be a few more minutes while we await for two more uh, board members. Everyone, and welcome to the folks who are here at the our meeting, and to those of us who are joining us on 
our Zoom meeting. This is a meeting of the Albany City Planning Board, and uh, my name is Alvin Summer. I want to share, and we will have um, four of our five planning board members here tonight. Thank you for seeing us out um, for no good reasons. They began with us Christopher Ellis and Martin Hall, and momentarily the next day on. I want to go over the rules of procedure that we have, um, and that is that uh, for each project, um, we will have the applicant um, speak on the project. This is a project we've already seen, and in this particular meeting, all the projects we have already seen either in a regular planning board meeting or in our workshops. We will ask uh, that the presentation be no more than six minutes long. The planning board members will then have an opportunity to ask questions of the um, applicant. And after that, uh, we will um, open up the uh, floor for questions or comments. And then each person who from the public who would like to speak for about three minutes uh, to speak. I will mention now and make, I want to make sure that everybody is aware that if you want to speak on a particular project that we have up on the agenda, you must sign in now and let um, our staff member, Luis, know. Uh, because we will not be taking any signups after the meeting begins. So if there is a project that you want to make comments on, and you have to sign up now. After the public comments, um, the staff will present their findings and recommendations. The applicants then will have three minutes to make any corrections or comments um, that might have arisen during the presentation. And Luis, if you would, can you explain uh, to the folks who are online or in the audience uh, about timing? And the three minutes and how we'll go these three minutes. So, uh, good evening. Uh, the public comment will be limited to three minutes per speaker. Uh, you'll be provided an opportunity to speak. A timer will be run. Uh, and at the three, end of the three minutes, uh, you will be asked to finish up your thoughts uh, as we move on to the next speaker signing up. Uh, so, as the board chair mentioned, we are currently taking comments from individuals who have pre-signed up uh, to speak. Uh, and this has also been announced in the chat previously. Um, if you have an interest in providing input for a case, please uh, mention that in the uh, chat um, as we move forward. Thank you. So we'll wait another minute or two we do have a quorum. Uh, we'll see, I guess, um, this game out is tied up for traffic.
Okay. We're going to begin uh, the meeting. We do have a quorum. Um, Ms. Gaynard is unfortunately unable to attend. Um, well, we have two items on the agenda that's on our consent agenda. Uh, that is uh, 91 North Pearl Street and 66 State Street. Um, so I would, on the consent agenda items, I would, uh, I would ask for a motion to agree to the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Okay. Any comments? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. It's unanimous. Um, and on the consent agenda, um, we would go to approve 191 North Pearl Street, which is the uh, major development plan review for a four story multi family building with 18 building units. Move to accept. And move to accept. Is there a second? No. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. And then the second item on the consent agenda is 66 State Street. And this is also for apartments. This is a mixed use of downtown development. Um, and that project uh, also, you know, historic. Property. Is there a recommendation to accept one move? Second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. We will now move on to the public hearing agenda. We have uh, an item on the public hearing agenda, which is 163 Clinton Avenue. This is a project by home leasing for a conditional use permit to convert uh, approximately 16,000 square foot uh, former religious institution into a multi-family dwelling unit with 13 dwellings. Uh, this project was approved by the planning board uh, in last year, uh, but the um, approval has expired. And as a result, um, it has to come before the board once again for us to uh, review it and to uh, see if there have been any changes. The funding uh, for this year is what uh, for last year is what held it up. Mr. Hirschberg, uh, is there any new things that you want to tell us about the project? And have changed oh, Chairman, about, the, about the status for the, um, the funding. Yeah, the, uh, the project is, is applied for another round of ACR funding. Uh, and it, it, they, they could go forward before it was funded. They did not make the last funding round. Uh, they were prepared to go forward. And there is no, uh, no change to the project since we last approved it. Uh, um, the uh, historic rehabilitation is still going on in the building, and uh, all the other issues that were addressed previously have not changed. Uh, yeah, some ideas if you want to talk about it. Is there anybody from the public who would like to speak? There are no individuals signed up to speak. It is not by the public. Okay, thank you. I would entertain a motion then from the board to approve the project um, as presented. Second. For the discussion. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? It is approved unanimously. Okay, and Mr. Hirschberg, you are up for the next project, which is also on the public hearing agenda, and that is 19 and 23 Active Boulevard. This is a um, project of the Albany Leadership Charter High School for Girls. 
Um, and it is a request for conditional use permit to build a temporary trailer classroom for school use. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the project is, is on the agenda because we uh, the school is a uh, uh, major conditional use permit in the uh, in the uh, zone and uh, the mixed use uh, community owned zone. Uh, this is a temporary project. The trail will be put in actually on the property of uh, St. Paul's Episcopal Church, the property next door, which has that uh, 23 half of uh, and will be accessed by a walkway across into the existing building at 19 half of uh, We went through the review. So if you want to uh, tool through quickly, I think uh, have a very short PowerPoint, I think, for this presentation. Louise, you want to, it shows the location. It's uh, in the side yard of the uh, um, St. Paul's Episcopal Church, which is actually a rear yard because there are two practices. Next to Louise, it shows the plan. The dark black line is the, is the outline for the trailer. It would sit there in the parking area adjoining uh, uh, St. Paul's Church, and there's a walkway going across. Uh, handicap accessibility is through a ramp. From um, the parking lot um, um, at the uh, Project of 19 um, at the Bola. Next, please. This is a view of the building, uh, a view of the trailer. Uh, it's brought in uh, the two pieces, the module, and it's put together. Uh, it serves the need of actually having four classrooms. Uh, and this will uh, function for the middle school addition to the Albany uh, uh, Charter High School. Next, this is to comply with the code. One, one issue we had to have was the uh, tree trees, uh, and we uh, we set out we did a photometric we, or a photographic review of the trees to identify the dimension of all the trees, and we complied because we had uh, we had an equivalency of being uh, uh, 19 trees, and the 19 trees is a net by that row of trees in front of St. Paul's Church and a large tree on the Samaritan roadside. I think that's it. I don't know. Oh, consistent with the neighborhood. Uh, you can see the area it is is all surrounded by other uh, buildings. They, uh, uh, and if they would not uh, be uh, objectionable to any of our neighbors. Uh, St. Paul's Church has been very cooperative with the uh, all the leadership uh, of the Charter Girls uh, School. And um, we think that is, and this is a temporary use. We're applying for a one year temporary permit. Uh, we plan on undertaking uh, an addition to their existing building. It's a it's will have enough classroom space to meet this need. Um, and we think it'll be going to be here. If it's not, we may have to apply for an extension of this, but certainly not for a Okay. Lisa, are there any uh, line of the public who wants to speak on this issue? There is not. Okay. Um, can, uh, can you, uh, as the staff, give us any, um, any highlights or uh, recommendations? A staff recommendation for this uh, would be to uh, conditionally approve uh, the uh, proposal on the condition that the approval will expire after one year and any extension will require review and approval by the planning board. Uh, the second condition being that the applicant must receive approval from the Albany County Department of Health for the use and placement of the proposed holding tank. Okay, any questions from the board? Okay, the uh, recommended action, we have two things to vote on. Uh, the first one is 
for the State Environmental Quality Review Act as negative declaration. I hear a motion. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. And the second recommended action is approved with these conditions. The first condition is that the approval will expire after one year. And any extension will require review and approval by the board. The second condition is that the applicant must receive, must receive approval from the Albany County Department of Health for the use and placement of the proposed sewage holding tank. Um, and that, Mr. Chairman, we no. also recommend uh, that be written in the um, the, the specific. Statute uh, from the uh, County Health Department that uh, has the requirements. Mr. Chairman, um, the applicant has changed the plan, and we put we're showing now a sewer connection to the ladder that goes into the leadership academy, so we don't have we will not have to apply for a holding tank for the sewage. We can make a direct connection to the sewer on the 19. Okay, then I would have to ask, uh, and then you're going to ask uh, either Luis or um, planning director Brad Glass, who's in attendance. Um, will that require uh, review by our department then, Department of Water and Wastewater, since uh, they wanted to connect? Uh, yes. So, now that the director indicated that there would be an additional review required. I'm like, I, 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 you don't take your mask off. Yeah, I think it would be uh, healthy just a matter of practice since um, that's a change. I think that, that we're just being told now that it's not reflected on the plans. It is. It was the last plan I submitted showed it on it, and we actually submitted a copy down to Hill O'Connor about two weeks ago that showed it. Sort of have you, to your knowledge, seen any endorsement from only one or no, it, was, it was strictly a lateral connection to the to the sewer, so I don't, uh, I don't think there's a problem with the common water water supply approval. Since it was conditioned by the only time the Department of Health approval of a holding tank, I would think that the same condition would apply for the approval of the sewer. Yeah, I, I would clearly, um, I guess, amend the condition to state that in the in the circumstance that a sewer lateral is used to place the holding tank, that the um, only water department would need to endorse uh, the action of that into our city system. As a condition? Yep. Is that acceptable to the board members? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, um, instead, condition two will be the applicant must receive approval from the um, Albany City Department of water and wastewater for the connection of the sewage line to the existing um, system of the actual permanent school. We'll wait until Luis gets all that down. Okay, thank you. All right, based on those conditions, all those in favor, please say aye. I move to oh, we're not going to accept the yeah. project with the two conditions listed. Second. Okay. So moved and seconded. Based on the two conditions, which is the, uh, the expiration of one year and the connection to the existing sewer system. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? And thank you. We now move to the public meeting agenda. And the first item on the public meeting agenda is 25 Delaware Avenue, which is uh, the uh, proposal to build a uh, multifamily dwelling consisting of 52 units and 30 parking places, including the renovation of a 5,500 square foot structure. Uh, this is a major development plan review, and this appearance uh, uh, before the board was on June 25th. However, we've seen uh, some iterations of this 
over the course of the our year, including in our last planning board workshop meeting. Mr. Chairman, um, the building has changed, the appearance of the building has been changed. There are a number of comments made uh, during the HRC visit to the site, uh, reviewing the uh, uh, both the new building as well as the, uh, the signal, the old signal, fire signal building, and all those conditions have been complied with. The, the uh, um, building elevations have been changed. The, uh, the viewscape has been changed. There was a change in the amount of a jut out on the uh, east side of the building next next to Warren Street, and that that has been changed. So, but again, we think that the um, building has redesigned its all requests of. Uh, HRC and uh, also the, uh, the planning board made comments at the uh, previous meeting. Uh, and all those changes to the buildings have been complied with and we're uh, ready to go. Uh, and uh, this project is moving quickly towards hopefully a coin building. So I guess they have the renderings on the PowerPoint, but I don't know whether or not you want to see them again. Yes, that's my point. Any comments? Sorry, I was speaking on this. Action by the staff um, is uh, to uh, have a negative declaration on the Spring Environmental Quality Review Act. So moved. Second. Okay. Discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. The second um, item is a recommendation of, of approval of the project with these conditions, which there are two. The form is that prior to the approval of any building permits, the applicant must receive approval from the Albany County Department of Health and the New York State Department of NCON um, for a sewer extension. And then secondly, prior to the approval of any building permits, the applicant must receive approval from the Division of Traffic Engineering. Do I have a motion to approve the project with those conditions? So moved. Second. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, thank you. Our next item on the agenda is 1415 Washington Avenue. Uh, the applicant um, is proposing to demolish a 66,000 square foot hotel and construct a 415,000 square foot student dormitory with 240 units and a parking garage with uh, approximately 207 automobile parking spaces. And we have representatives here to speak on it. This is a project we've seen a couple of times, but I believe this is the first time we have it um, on the official agenda. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, our purpose here today is to ask for a negative declaration of the largest speaker. Um, the project has moved forward, a number of reviews going on. Um, one that has taken a significant length of time to resolve had to do with pedestrian safety crossing Washington Avenue. Um, and uh, if, uh, uh, Louise, if you go down the slide or two, there it is. Uh, 
the uh, the um, recommendations from uh, Bill Trudeau are these: so we'll install one traffic signal at a location between the two traffic signals at East Sydney Roadway and Commons Circle Roadway. Um, location determined during design. <clears throat> install a center media to guide pedestrians to provide refuge to cross Viking and Avenue at one of the traffic signal locations. Length of design to be determined during the time. And develop a path on Sunia Main This will also assist pedestrians waiting to use the traffic signals. And develop will need to work with Sunia to on this time. On both sides of the road, we all have deterrence to encourage pedestrians to use the pedestrian crossings and not cross at other convenient locations. This will be to, to be determined during design. And finally, to develop traffic signal timing and corridor timings for the traffic signal with the corridor from 1365 West and Avenue West, Collins Circle, four signals, including a new signal. This is necessary to provide progressive, progressive, progressive coordination of all modes of transportation. Those are the recommendations the applicant prepared to the convention and the member of the standing with the city. And all of those, uh, all of those items. So is there any uh, other parts of the presentation that you have? Well, I, I do have, uh, I don't know whether or not the, the PowerPoint that I forwarded in did have elevation views of the building, and, but I don't think it made it. Okay, is there um, anybody in the public that wants to speak? And this, of course, is on, on just giving a negative declaration, um, declaration for the project um, for speaker. There are no speakers. Okay. Um, uh, any that you want to um, discuss, the staff wants to discuss with us? Uh, yeah, the, the staff recommendation would only be regarding the, the um, speaker action, and that would be a recommendation for a negative declaration. And then, for a glass. Yeah, I just wanted to weigh in quickly. Is this work? Turn it on. Should be on. Oh, okay. okay. Um, just waiting real quickly, this is a project that we've had um, on a calendar for over a year now, and I think we're all sort of trying to grapple with um, the crossing situation out on, on Washington Avenue, um, you know, jaywalking a number of locations happening there. Um, there are suitable locations to cross, but as you know, path of least resistance sometimes wins out. Um, you know, the city has planned for and is in conversations with the university. Um, to resolve that um, situation in a much more significant way moving forward, um, you know, we tried to sometimes to get that to occur during this project, but I think the, the commonality here is one project cannot bear the entire mitigation. So we tried to find a solution that fits in with the larger plan, does not undermine that plan, um, and improves the situation in a tangible way. And I think that's what's been proposed here. Uh, Respect this project, and I think it's a conversation that continue to discuss moving forward. Um, but in the in light of the time that this has been under review, um, you know, I ask the board to move forward on the negative declaration tonight. Um, this will be coming back for a uh, formal vote uh, late at the next meeting. Um, and I would think at that time we would have uh, the detail, detail, formal details and contours of the proposed mitigation. Um, Showing on the site plan documents so that the board can view that in greater detail. But I think what's represented here in writing is agreeable to our traffic vision uh, and to the planning department to um, so allow the uh, secret declaration to move forward um, in light of the uh, significant mitigation that's being proposed with respect to the traffic safety issue. Uh, we do have a number, a number of other uh, loose ends that we need to iron out as well, but none of those are explicitly related to the. Um, I can't answer any other questions. 
Don't join any questions from me. I just want to say I, I agree with you. This is a pretty robust plan that, that goes a long way towards uh, mitigating a, a, a very important issue. The other thing I just wanted to point out is uh, with respect to the affordable housing plan, or uh, we're currently discussing with the applicant, um, being that a dormitory is a non-traditional residential project, it's really not clear um, if it meets our affordable housing requirement and code, um, but we are in agreeable terms that um, the, the goal should be there to at least meet the intent of the provision. So we're discussing a number of alternative uh, options or ways of meeting that, being that and most students are on a lower income scale um, than residents in the city in general. So we don't know that the set aside of 5% units would serve the general goal um, of that standard. So we are looking at alternatives. We haven't settled on any particular alternative at this time. Um, there are a couple options on the table, but we'll be ready to uh, present that, discuss that further at the uh, session. How do we? determine whether the students are lower income or not, because many of these students would be going to school with, with assistance from their parents or from other sources. So even though students technically are low income, are low income because their students are not working, yet they have sources of income. So how would you determine that? Well, it's a, it's a fair question too, and the code refers to dwelling units specifically. I mean, dormitory style residency is not mm -hmm. traditional in terms of dwelling units, um, being that there's often more than three unrelated occupants residing in some of these units, uh, which would not be the general classification of family uh, in the dwelling unit. So um, I think it's difficult to determine, and I think um, just proposing a set aside wouldn't be serving the intended um, recipients of the you know, subsidized housing under the inclusionary program. So um, I think in struggling with simply how to determine that, we sort of decided that an alternate course would be the best means to move forward here. So what that looks like, I think we're currently assessing the options as to what solution we may put forward. But the developer has Will we come to the table willing to satisfy the requirement whether or not it explicitly applies for the uh, legal determination on, you know, mm -hmm. definition one? So uh, basically, we, um, by the next meeting, you know, the, the, the items will be iron out. Correct. Yeah. And I, I do believe we have uh, the other departmental sign offs that we need. The traffic was really the, the biggest thing. So, we just need to get those uh, comments on a plan on paper. I know I've seen several drafts they may have even shared with you of potential mitigation. So, uh, certainly that's something that's already developed and shared by you by the workshop. Further questions? Yeah, I just looked in the drop box to make sure I didn't miss it. Has there been any uh, documentation or conversations between the developer and State University of New York and Albany? Um, I don't know if they've spoken directly. I think they did connect briefly early on in the project. Um, I have been in contact with the University of Albany. I've made them aware of where we are at in this project with respect to uh, the proposed solution. I think um, from my conversations, um, you know, they are concerned, um, but they're also understanding of the situation that, you know, one project cannot entirely um, cover the cost of redesigning a roadway, and it's probably going to require, uh, you know, a grant application in conjunction with some of that project funding uh, moving forward. So um, there's also the timeliness of you know, designing a full mitigation scenario for the roadway would probably take at least upwards of a year, maybe two years. And by that time, we're running into conflict with when shovels are going to be in the ground. So um, it, it's something we're still working in cooperation with the university on. And um, I, I did speak uh, whether connecting to their internal PATH pad system would be something that's acceptable to them. And they're certainly willing to explore that. So I'm confident that we can 
and work through and resolve those issues. So will we get um, some, at least uh, some general uh, concept level uh, design or some, some idea of what their presentation would look like? Yeah, we suggested the workshop and then present the board. So you get feedback and again, the board doesn't have to vote next month, but I think we'd be in position to do so. Further questions? Okay. I want to take a motion uh, for a major preparation for the State Environmental Quality Review Act. So moved. Seconded. Moved and seconded. Questions, comments? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Unanimously passed. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. See you next month. Our last item on the agenda is um, the concept review, and then this is a proposal for. Uh, 17 through 25 year old boulevard. Um, and this is for a mixed use um, project and a major development plan review for the conversion of an existing 240,000 square foot warehouse into almost 300 apartments and an expansion of an existing surface parking lot. The um, this is a project that, um, that we've seen a couple times in the past, and also um, I will, uh, for the record, note that um, uh, members of the planning board visited the site uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, and that included um, myself and, and Christopher Ellis, and we reviewed, you know, we, we took a look at the the proposal uh, and concept, but it was very helpful to be there at the building and to see uh, more of what the developer wanted to do. So we now will have an update uh, on the developer representative. Thank you, Chairman. Also, who is uh, uh, Jeff Beals on the Zoom there? We had him as a speaker. Yeah, he is on the president of the participant list and he has been given the ability to argue the responsibility. Right. So I'm my Mr. Burn Chair with my current development, the Money Escape for 21 Area Associates, and I believe Jeff, you are also on. I am okay. on, although this moving is this meeting is moving way too fast for my liking. You guys are supposed to be much slower. <laughs> um we'll, 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 we'll talk a little bit more slowly for you. I wasn't I wasn't prepared to talk until it was dark. Uh, appreciate you allowing us to appear again before the board. We are making um, fantastic uh, fantastic progress on this project. Um, uh, I'm also very appreciative of your trip to the site. I think it helped us explain to you uh, exactly what we're trying to do um, on this uh, challenging effort. Um, who's got control of the slides and do we want to slip, flip through those? Perfect. Um, so as we discussed last time, this is uh, properly zoned for the uses that we're going through. Uh, you know, Zach, Brad, myself and Joe had a conversation before uh, a couple of weeks ago about making sure we're, we're buttoned up right there. We have a few, um, few points we need to address um, on the uh, front side of the parking lot as it relates to um, land usage and uh, the current owner has been using that land, but uh, doesn't have uh, the official uh, approval from the city of Albany to do so. So we're gonna take care of that because Albany has a right of way uh, through there. So uh, next slide. Um, the, so this is the front of the building, which has been uh, updated to include sidewalks uh, along area Boulevard, some additional trees and landscaping um, and the fencing, which we're battling back and forth with in-house about uh, what we want to do. I, I will point out one of the challenges that we've had in working through a uh, concept site plan is um, with the addition of the parking that we're adding, we're really trying to control um, the, the movement in and out of the site as it relates to commercial activity. Uh, on the next slide, we'll talk about some of our commercial users, but um, there's a balance needed here that um, uh, I will say 
it's probably going to work itself out over time. As we start to work on this project, we actually anticipate the commercial usages being complete prior to the residential and the residential taking about 18 months to complete. Um, and so we'll have the opportunity to figure out uh, vehicular traffic during that time. Um, next slide. Please jump in and stop me if I'm talking too fast. Uh, the rear site plan's also been updated. Obviously, there's a bit of a challenge here with uh, 787 presenting such a, um, a dramatic neighbor. Uh, it is loud, but it is surprisingly not loud in the building. Uh, we've done decibel readings all across the backside, and um, I will say that it can barely be heard. But we also recognize, you know, from our standpoint, this is a little bit of an unusual project for us in that we own so much land. Uh, and typically we're buying uh, buildings that are uh, lot, line, lot line buildings uh, and have no ability to add some amenities. Uh, so what you'll see on here is we've actually added uh, a bocce and beach volleyball courts. We have a walking path that is actually, um, you know, a clever extension of a utility path that's currently existing there uh, to access the billboard that everyone is familiar with. Um, so we'll have a walking trail around it. And then these community gardens, which you can see are kind of, um, looks like it's about 70 there, these little plots uh, that we would add, um, you know, and I won't lie, very long-term hopes that we can actually end up uh, having the ability to use some of the state land that buffers 787 and grow this potential community garden space. Parking would uh, be something that needs to be looked at. Um, I will add, you know, this is an ever-changing uh, project. So this morning uh, in our, our weekly meeting on this project, we did contemplate adding a swimming pool to the exterior. We currently have a, a pool anticipated uh, inside the building, which has a courtyard, an existing courtyard um, that we were going to make use of, but uh, it's got some challenges. So uh, I, I anticipate before we receive your final approval on this project that we would have uh, an even further updated exterior site plan. Uh, you'll, you'll notice there is a, uh, a massive amount of parking here. We do have enough parking to handle uh, all of the required uses that you require, but also um, from a usage perspective as the, as the building owner, we think that we will have enough. Next slide. clearly show where 787 is. Is it right up hard up against the edge of the uh, site plan's uh, northern line? No, so there's a couple acres of land in between um, what, what we are showing as the property line and 787. It's a New York State right of way through DOT. Um, you know, at, at its widest point, it's uh, several hundred feet and at its, at its smallest width is actually a little further south in the warehouse district where it starts to tighten up. But there is um, a significant amount of green space between our property line and 787. And also, uh, can you explain what the dotted, it looks like Morse code line is on the upper right hand part of the drawing? Uh, either Joe or maybe Dan Hirschberg is still sitting there. One of them can tell you what that is. Uh, that's just a uh, elevation line. Okay. The, the total elevation. The property line is the uh, line that runs the top of the parking lot there. So the dotted line is an elevation line. Correct. Okay. Okay. Uh, I have one question. Which is um, there's a rail track that runs through the uh, property. Is that still in use, or is that going to be removed? There's a rail line that runs through the property? There's an abandoned railroad track okay. um, in the back there. Okay. That's not okay. in okay. But we're actually leaving part of the tent and it'll be along that blocking path. You'll be able to see the other railroad tracks. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thanks. So I think the big the big thing here. Someone asked me the other day what the building is going to look like, and you know the big the big ad here is replacing all of these uh, boxed out windows with uh, reglazing uh, to let just what it's going to be an incredible amount of light into the building. Um, we have received our 
um, part one approval from um, National Park Service. We are currently awaiting the part two approval from the National Park Service, but we do not anticipate any issues having uh, been through the building with them uh, a number of times over the past couple of months. Uh, and the exterior will, for the most part, um, remain the same, but for the addition of the sidewalks and street trees uh, in accordance with the USDO. Next page. Yeah, so the commercial space update is really what I'm looking forward to sharing with everyone tonight. Uh, I'm feeling uh, really great about almost all of these uses. And when I say really great, I mean, not that they will work, but that they will sign on to the project and then uh, obviously, if we're doing that, we, uh, we believe they're going to work. So I'm going to tackle them from right to left. Um, the commercial spaces inside here are all in the orange color. Um, on the right hand side, we would have a boutique fitness center. I'm not really going to name, I'm only going to name one of these people by name tonight. Um, uh, the rest of them are all uh, in between a letter of intent. And we have a few leases actually out for signature. Um, and so I anticipate by the next meeting, I'll be able to share actual names with you and we'll have uh, all of these in place. Uh, on the right hand side, we're calling this boutique fitness center. I can tell you that it is a local user um, who has an established clientele and they would be um, locating from outside of the city of Albany. They would be re relocating into the city of Albany. So it would be a pickup of a commercial tenant. Um, to the left of that, you'll see um, an elongated uh, rectangle here um, that is going to be a rock climbing facility. Um, the group that we are working with is out of Brooklyn. Uh, this will be, I believe, their fourth rock climbing gym um, in New York, uh, and they have one outside of the state. Uh, it, is, um, it is a space that is ready-made for a funky facility like that. Um, we're going to take advantage of the 35-foot-plus uh, clearance that we have there, um, and uh, go to town with what I believe will be a spectacular facility. Uh, it, it is um, a really good group of guys, uh, and I'm hoping by the next meeting we will have um, uh, an actual signed lease and I can name them by name. Uh, behind that rock climbing facility is a very small square you see there. Um, when I'm done talking, Joe can get you an exact square footage, uh, but that's going to be a restaurant space. It's actually... Um, uh, a friend of and new business partner of the rock climbing gym. So it is another um, user from Brooklyn uh, who is going to come up here and open up a small scale restaurant that will both play to the facility and the apartments that we have in it, um, but also to the people who are coming to the rock climbing gym. They have um, a very symbiotic vibe. Uh, we think that they're going to get along great and plucking a restaurant into the backside of um, this building, um, it, it's us playing into that Hawk Finn uh, warehouse and more vibe that's been there for 20 plus years. This is going to have an and more vibe. On the front side of the building, you'll see a very small square. That's going to be a coffee shop slash retail space. Um, it is a non-existent coffee shop, uh, but a name that people will know. So it'll be a new add to the Albany uh, economy as well. And then I think this is going to be the first time I've ever said this publicly, but that um, that Tetris shaped piece that is almost a square all the way to the left. Um, we're happy to tell you guys today that we have reached a handshake agreement with the operators of Huck Finn to actually maintain uh, the Huck Finn space on the first floor of the existing building. That box is about 24,000 square feet. Uh, it will help the um, it will help the warehouse uh, maintain a significant presence. Uh, the, the furniture industry is sh shifting dramatically, but in talking with Jeff Sperber, they think that they can really make this space work. And I think most importantly, from our conversations that we had initially with the city, um, what I love about what we're doing with the commercial space here is that we're happy to report to you guys that there will actually be an increase in jobs out of this building when we are done. Um, from where it currently is today. We are working on uh, the Capitalize Albany application today and are, are confident that we will have more jobs than when we started. Um, and coming out of COVID and being able to do that and add um, 275 apartments, uh, we think that this is going to be um, a very good economic development project uh, across the board. 
questions on the commercial space before we flip? Anything? Okay. So uh, status is the schematic design is the most exhausting process I've ever been through in my entire life. Um, we have uh, poured over every one of these apartment layouts uh, to the point where I'm just really want to get building um, site docs and engineering reports and all the logistic documents that we own the planning board will be uh, in the coming weeks. Uh, I think the longest lead time we had was the SWIP report. Um, we are paying them to expedite that and, and looking good. The anticipated project schedule would be a, a, a close, hopefully by the end of the year. And then we're showing um, a summer 23 finish on there. Um, I told you before that what we're trying to do on the commercial side is really have it so that Huck Finn uh, in particular is never closed for a day. That would be very exciting. It'll be an effort, um, but we think we can logistically pull it off. Um, and then we really want the rock gym uh, and um, uh, the boutique gym as well to be open um, by early spring of 22. Uh, so while the project itself will be long, given the dynamic we have between the front and the back parking lots and our ability to control construction traffic and visitor traffic and understanding what the current Huckfin traffic is, we really think that we can pull it off so that this building is never dark and um, you know can can stay the stay as the economic driver that it's been. Um, but the residential piece would be the last piece, and that would be completed in the summer of twenty three. Uh, funding sources: this one's a doozy. Um, it's actually going to be one of the few um, projects in, in upstate that bumps up against the historic tax credit cap. So if you're unfamiliar, there's actually a cap on the historic tax credits that can be used. Uh, you can't get QREs above 25 million, and we will be above 40 million on this. Um, so um, it's a little bit different than a typical historic tax credit job, which we we often um, syndicate the tax credits to um, a J.P. Morgan Chase or a Berkshire Bank. Um, so this one uh, requires a little bit more creativity. And uh, continuing our um, philosophy in Albany, we have yet to ask for a pilot agreement uh, in the entire city. We are accessing the 485A tax abatement uh, upon completion. If you are not familiar with that, it is also an ever-changing program at the state level right now. Uh, uh, in the last session, the legislature added job requirements uh, and a percentage of um, space required to, to qualify for the 485A. And when you're tackling a project the size of Huck Finn's warehouse, um, that 15% requirement of space means that we need to be above 35,000 square feet of commercial usages. Um, and so that's a little bit of the driver on the commercial side as well. Um, right now we have 181 bedrooms, uh, 42 two beds and 57 studios, um, which is, um, you know, it's a lot of apartments. Um, the square footages are feel good. They're nice, healthy sizes. Uh, obviously that one bedroom, um, that one bedroom unit is our sweet spot. Uh, you're, you're all pretty familiar with what we did in downtown Albany. And uh, despite COVID, uh, we are having no problems on the apartment side. So while this is a very big bite at the Apple, uh, I am on record as saying, I think that Albany could handle 2000 new apartments and we are going to do our part to test that theory. Uh, parking uh, site has, um, uh, we'll have close to 400 spaces, which disturbs me as an urban developer, but it is what it is. We need a lot of parking and, um, you know, we, we have the ability to add more, uh, but we are going to target that 380. And then I talked a little bit before about, um, the amenities we'll have a gym and a, we'll have a gym in addition to the two commercial gym users, um, a pool, it'll be either inside or outside um game room a lobby an art gallery the dog park the volleyball the bocce court the whole nine it'll be i don't I, I don't really love the concept of of an island development but i think you know we've been bold in our discussions with this that we understand it's early to be doing a project like this in the warehouse district and so we are providing um you know a, a tick up in amenities that we we wouldn't normally do um but we do believe that the added benefit of, uh, of doing that will be there from the commercial and the residential side. Do we have any more slides or is that one? There? 
That would be it. Okay. I ran out of breath. Uh, is there any uh, people in public that want to speak? There are none. Okay. Question from the board? Not for me at this time. Okay. Yeah, I think my. Uh... I think uh, my, my uh, you know, question still remains to be the, uh, the, um, the main the, uh, apartments with no exterior walls and how exactly that works. So looking at the, um, at the floor plan here, it seems like, like a lot of them not only have like no exterior wall, but they just have one short wall against the hallway, a narrow hallway. So um, I'm sure it's, it's true, but uh, it's, uh, you know, I've always heard that you have to have means of egress for every vendor. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to be guts. You were looking at Joe. I'm going to let Joe answer the question. We're using a, I'm going to put him under the spotlight. We did a tour and we explained it while we were there, but I'll let, I'll let Joe explain it. Thank you, Jeff. Um, so the means of egress out of the bedroom is more about ventilation of air. And we use fresh air systems that pump fresh air into the building, every part of the building every two hours or so. Um, we do meet our means of egress on the apartment side. Each, each apartment has two means of egress once you exit the apartment in certain hallways. Um, as for the light and exterior walls, this building has rows of monitor windows that have been boarded up and will offer fresh sunlight into the building um, from the roof. That's, all the way around. That's in the two main days we saw a lot of those apartments that don't have yeah. the exterior windows. Tough to visualize on that one first floor, uh, floor plan. I would offer to bring you this in again. Happy to do that if it's easier to visualize. Okay. I have a question. Uh, sidewalks. Are they just going to be in the front of the building or are they going to extend down both south and north to a point where people can get across into Broadway? Yeah, so that uh, that question was brought up by staff earlier in the week. Um, I think that we made a commitment earlier in this project to um, extend them past our property line and willing to do that. Um, I don't want to publicly commit to how much and how far because I'm not really sure what land we have access to. So uh, we will get together with Brad and pull out some maps and, um, you know, if we can uh, if we can better the district and the walkability of the district, then I think that we would be happy to do that uh, and uh, have taken the the question of safety very seriously. And, um, you know, I, it's a, Al, it's a, it's a, it's a very interesting uh, thing that we need to solve for. Um, and I think that creatively we can, you know, we can't do the whole thing, but we'll figure out what we can do that'll actually make a difference and not be, you know, just a nod. I don't want, I don't want to do something just to say, Oh, we did this. I'd like to do something that makes sense. And then along those lines, so just, um, have you thought any more about how um, the residents uh, can get direct access to Broadway without either going south or north? Um, a way to get over uh, railroad tracks uh, that are there and right in, into uh, Broadway, which is you know pretty close actually. Yeah, Joe is actually, um, Joe has spent some time walking down there and figuring out, uh, you know, public access, right, right of ways and um, different things that we can do. You know, I think when you go down there and you look at like a noble gas solutions, they did such a good job on their property and improving it, um, you know, that a few connection points here and there. Um, and it's going to be real, it's going to be really easy to actually do that. Um, I think that the challenge is, um, you know, building on land that either we or you don't own and who then is responsible for the maintenance and the insurance. And um, there are some logistical issues um, where I, you know, I wish we could just build a bridge over the train tracks, but I don't think that we're quite there yet either. Yeah. Um, what's the rent levels and um, how does it relate to um, requirement for affordable housing. I know most yes. projects seem to be uh, in that ballpark. We, um, yeah, obviously we love the workforce housing. Um, we're not building luxury housing. And I can tell you we're not, um, 
We're not going into this thing with a very high high number per apartment. The sweet spot is once again between 11 and 1300. Uh, and then we have our all in living, which is on top of that, but is, you know, so that includes all the utilities, including, um, you know, gas, uh, electric, heating, cooling, internet, and cable. Everything is included for less than $200 a month, which is, you know, a third of what the market is, uh, depending on your, your cable package. Um, and so, you know, we're, we're still targeting what we're going to target. There is a very large number that uh, is associated with the, the offset, the set aside that you guys have. Um, we, we have it in our heads. We're looking at the performer. We're targeting the right units and we will over communicate with you to make sure that we're there. So um, I always want to make sure that the, all the other amenities you mentioned is a, an initial $200 not included in the rent. Is that right? Or did I um, so everything in the building that you will need to live is like an extra two, it's a little bit less than 200 hours a month. Uh, but that includes everything. So you only write, you write one check a month. It's just, that's it. I'll clarify. I'll clarify just point. The, the amenities that you mentioned, the amenities you mentioned, the pool, the dog park, the long track, that's all included in your rent. But the utilities is what the extra two hundred dollars is for. The amenities are all included. Access to the pool and the gym. So you're you're not going to be charging people for, uh, for the uh, heat and um, electrical. Even if they use too much of it, it's all going to be kind of the same. The answer is yes. Uh, Jeff, you want to elaborate on that? Ah, Joe, you jumped in for me. You keep going. <laughs> <laughs> for answer is yes. Um, it's doesn't matter how much you use. We we do have the ability to track it. And if someone is you know using a certain amount of electricity, um, we could handle that ourselves. Yeah. But, yeah, that really happens. Al, Joe, Joe and I actually both live in downtown Albany and we're both Red Barn tenants and we both pay full freight. And so every month what happens is we get we get our statement from from the company that says your rent is due and you click on the button and inside of that statement is, you know, Joe's rent is if Joe's is eleven hundred dollars, he then pays one hundred and seventy five dollars on top of that. And that includes everything else in the building. So that includes the amenities, but it also includes the heating, the electricity, the cable, and the internet. Um, the one thing that I remember when we were there was the um, incredible noise on 787, uh, even though um, when we looked at, when we toured it, um, we went out there and the, and, uh, the woman who was with us uh, indicated that uh, there would be terraces out there for the people who have the apartments facing to the north. But I'm wondering if you're rethinking that because uh, I, I just don't see anybody using that space. So it seems to be maybe an extra cost of energy that you don't need. Um, I don't know, unless it, even at nighttime, you know, you've got just trucks that are very noisy going up and down that corridor. Yeah, so I'll be honest with you. I would actually love it because I I can't sleep without noise. Um, my apartment is on Sheridan Avenue and uh, is behind the Hampton Inn, and I actually sleep with all of my windows open every night. Uh, and I can't sleep if the windows are closed. Um, so I I think it's kind of to each his own. But you know, for me personally, I would love the terrace back there. We will be doing soundproofing on that wall for the interior units. Um, but in general, you know, I'll say this, you know, that was part of the conversation that we had today about the swimming pool being in the backside with all, all the other green space, because we have an alcove in the middle of the building. It was up there before it's behind the gym space where that is actually a little courtyard inside the building that we could put the swimming pool and it would be insulated from the noise, but it would be a smaller space. Uh, and so one of the discussions we're having is how bad do we actually think the noise is on 787 and can we, you know, play some music and wire it for sound that way to help offset it? Um, you know, I don't know that we've fully made that decision. It's certainly a challenge of the project, but, um, you know, nothing that's scaring me too much. Yeah, I would just suggest that Sheridan Avenue is very different from 787. So 
Um, Come and hang out here on a Saturday night with me. <laughs> but I think, um, you know, definitely when, when one is inside the building, uh, there is, you, can, you can't hear the expressway. That's true. Uh, the building is built very well. It's just that as soon as you step outside on those loading docks, it's, it's pretty brutal. It is loud, yes. Any further questions? All right. Thank you so much. Appreciate your time. Things seem to be shaping up. Is there further business to come before the board? If not, I'll, I hope not. <laughs> I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. All right. Thank you very much.